our agenda for July 23rd, 2020. Uh, we had uh, Pinsky Law as a work session as well as Midler uh, Business Park. Uh, we have two more Steinway uh, subdivision and Britain Field, uh, the material on the on the building exterior is going to be reviewed uh, next work session. Correct, Nick? That's correct. Uh, they're on for August 11th. August 11th. Thank you. And may I have a motion? The minutes were hand, sent out. There were some edits. Uh, I have a motion to uh, move the minutes forward. I'll, I'll move, move Schroeder. Doug, uh, second. you second. Thank you, Doug. All in favor, uh, just signify by your name. Nathan, aye. Steve, aye. Doug, aye. Peter, aye. Okay. I just want to let everybody know that um, this meeting is being recorded for the Town of DeWitt's webpage. Thank you. Okay, uh, first up is Ultra Dairy. Do we have... Uh, yep. Peter, Jim will not be with us tonight, but he is aware of what we will be conducting business on. Okay. Uh, we have a resolution. Jamie, was there anything you wanted to add before I read the resolution? Does any board member want to weigh in on where we are? This is for any members of the public. This is something we've discussed uh, for uh, several meetings, several uh, emails, and uh, we're just finishing the the uh, last bit of our due diligence and, and approval process. Jamie? The only thing I wanted to add is you'll notice there's a seeker resolution in here because it is required for uh, the OSIDA uh, process that uh, they're going through. Okay. Does any of the board members have any questions? Hearing none, I'm going to uh, make a motion for Ultra Dairy Phase 2 expansion. Motion to approve the Ultra Dairy Phase 2 expansion is complete and final with the photometric plan last dated 6-12-2020. For the finding that the board has reviewed the EAF, EAF and the unlisted action submitted by the applicant for the Ultra Dairy Phase Two expansion project and issues a negative seeker declaration for the same and further with the finding that the photometric plan condition of the June 11, 2020 approval has been met and finding that except as modified herein and any other conditions of June 11, 2020 approval are in full force and effect and with the condition that the site plan documents as conditionally approved from June 11, 2020 and the photometric plan herein this approval is for such plans as so approved including other submitted documents there with site plan documents that have been signed by the planning board chairperson and the applicant it requires that all of the work shown be completed by the applicant in order for the certificate of occupancy or compliance to be issued any Proposed changes, additions, deletions of the scope of work or materials in the site plan documents are not approved and are subject to further site plan uh, review pursuant to the Town of DeWitt Code, Section 192 122. Uh, that's the motion. May somebody second that? Steve, I'll second. Thank you. All in favor, signify with your name. Nathan, aye. Steve, aye. Uh, Doug, I. Peter, I. Kathy, are you on yet? No. Okay. Uh, uh, carried unanimously. Uh, Tracy Holdings, uh, the storage facility. Um, Emily, do you want to? You've been bringing all of this up to date. I think everybody's in the loop, but uh, you want to show the plans and. Uh, Make any comments you wish relative to where we are in the uh, the process. Um, I believe that the items that we had asked for have all been addressed. Um, they're providing one way uh, traffic flow to accommodate the narrow aisle width. Um, signage has been added for that um, with one way out and do not enter. I think this is in good shape. The lighting was updated as well, um, okay. so that that is adequate. Thank you. So uh, Emily, they, they switched the flow? Yes. Correct. OK. I think it makes sense, you know, in the, the context of going down. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. I'm a, they're very good with that. Uh, the motion to approve the Tracy Holdings LLC storage, storage facility is complete and final with the following conditions of the July 9, 2020 approval. The planning board having been met. Grading information to ensure a maximum 2% slope for ADA parking and unloading zone. Signage and lighting photometric plan provided. Sign variance is granted by ZBA and the sign plan as presented and dated uh, 7 2020 and approved. All other conditions of the July 9th, 2020 planning board approval are in full force and effect. Uh, final plans uh, photometric stated 7 21 20. Someone second that? I'll second, Nathan. Nathan, thank you. All in favor? Steve, aye. Doug, aye. Nathan, aye. Peter, aye. Okay. And excuse me, um, who made the motion on the ultra dairy? Peter, I did. seconded it. Peter did. So, uh, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Uh, hey, I'd just like to say thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. We look forward to it. <laughs> got, we have a few black and blues, but we're, we'll, we'll, we'll get over it. Okay. Uh, Racy Road Equipment Building Edition. Um, there's nothing new on this, uh, Emily. Uh, on, uh, correct. On All of the items that we had asked for have been um, addressed uh, with the updating of, of the crosswalk, the end hatches, um, and the updating plan. Yeah, I think we're all very familiar with this. Uh, uh, motion to approve the site plans and architectural plans is submitted with the following findings and conditions. The ZBA granted a special use permit for the expansion of the commercial garage on this site. Variances for signage were granted by the ZBA Board of Appeals July 20th, 2020. The board has reviewed uh, the OCPB referral of uh, uh, the county planning board referral of February 26, 2020, which is contained in the modification as follows. Quote, the New York State Department of Transportation has determined that the applicant must contact the department to discuss any required traffic data for the proposed project. The board is approved. The traffic information is provided by the applicant as part of this approval. To further meet department requirements, the applicant should submit a lighting plan for any new lighting on the site. The municipality must ensure that mitigation is, as may be determined by the department, is reflected on the project plan prior to or as a condition of municipal approval. This board has accepted the lighting plan as submitted by the applicant. To the extent the action of the town is a contravention of the the Modification set forth in the uh, county planning board referral. This board overrides the modification by a majority plus one vote as conditions of this approval. The requirements of the subdivision granted for this parcel on June 25th, 2020 must be completed. And two, the approval for the plan, plans and submitted documents, site plan documents that have been signed by the planning board chairperson and the applicant requires that all work shown be completed by the applicant. In order for a uh, certificate of occupancy or compliance to be issued, any proposed changes, additions, deletions, scope of work or materials from the site plan documents are not approved and are subject to further site plan review pursuant to Town DeWitt Code Section 192-122. Uh, that's the motion. Second, please. I'll second. Kathy? It's Welcome. Kathy. Okay. Drum roll, please. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Kathy, okay. Steve, aye. Nathan, aye. Doug, you're kind of leaving us in suspense here, so I, that's your intent. It's working. Um, Peter, aye. Okay. Is Doug muted Doug, or not muted? Doug and Leif are both muted. Sorry, Peter, can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you. Sorry, I'm having internet issues and I keep getting booted off. That's not what, personal. What did I miss? Sorry. <laughs> uh, we're voting on we, the- uh, We're adjourning? Is that what I heard? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we're voting on the Tracy edition. Uh, the, the Tracy editions for the parking and all the other retirements that we discussed. Do you have any questions? Same motion that vote? was sent to you. Yes. Yes, I, I concur. Yes. Okay. And Nathan? I said I. Positive. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I said I. Okay, that's unanimous. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate your forbearance with this process. Uh, <laughs> thank you. As fun as it is, I know you'll miss us. Uh, <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pinsky Law Office. Uh, I know that I think it was Doug that had a question, Doug, uh, regarding the elevations, and I think Nick uh, sent those out. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, I did receive those. So, is uh, is the question on the uh, you know the property line and the building wall? Is that been addressed um, at this point? terms of um, materials used on that wall. Again, my, my question was just to confirm that because of its adjacency to the property line, it's not going to be a change in materials, noticeable change in materials on the outside of the building. I think the architect and, and engineer uh, answered that, but if they're in um, presence, um, could they? Yes. Speak up? Oh, yes, yeah. that's correct. This is Craig Hymas, the architect. So what is the siding, Craig? The siding is uh, intended to be uh, uh, a vinyl siding with uh, synthetic uh, trim materials, as shown on the elevations. Um, we generally don't approve vinyl. Well, that, that's been on there since uh, the beginning. Uh, that's a desire of the client to... Uh, to utilize that and the uh, you can see the uh, synthetic uh, trim materials including the uh, columns and uh, coining um, brackets uh, that uh, kind of completes the design yeah I just I'll, I'll say that I missed it as well um, this is this is not something that we have normally approved at all um, and I don't want to set a precedent. Uh, Nathan, Doug, do you want to comment on this? I'm in agreement with Steve. Kathy? I'm in agreement with Steve. Okay. If Can we uh, switch this, that to uh, like a hardy board or something? Uh, we, we did uh, offer that as an alternative. And, uh, you know, we could make the substitution of the vinyl with a... Uh, fiber cement siding product, if that was pleases the board. Uh, that's 100% would please to the board. Okay. I appreciate your quick uh, acceptance of that. Uh, so we, we will add that. Uh, good question on that. Uh, did you want to comment on the wall? I know that you commented in one of our work sessions regarding that and that you had uh, the yes. one that's supposed to repeat. Go ahead. Uh, I've had actually two conversations with our excavator in terms of uh, undermining the retaining wall uh, when we go to uh, uh, install the new foundation wall. And he's assured me that that will not present a problem, that he's going to provide adequate shoring to make sure that uh, there's no subsidence. So uh, that issue, I think we put to bed. Uh, and in terms of uh, materials, obviously the fiber cement is a non-combustible product. So, uh, you know, that even if the, the building migrated closer than five feet, which it should not, it should comply to New York State code. And that would be our intent, obviously. Okay. I guess it's, it's got to comply with New York State code. What, yeah. The answer I'd be yeah, looking for. Yeah, just make sure you have a, um, a, an approved UL assembly for that. I mean, just because you are so close to the property line, mm -hmm. make sure that you're showing that UL assembly on your drawings so that it's clear. Will do. And I think the hardy board fighting is more in keeping with the, uh, the one hour rating. It's. Good point. 
point, Steve. Uh, any other issues? It's going to be a handsome addition. I know that. Be to commend it and on the work. Um, hearing none, does any other board member have anything to weigh in on? Then I'll motion to approve the plans as submitted with the uh, substitution of uh, cement party board. That's the correct terminology uh, instead of the vinyl siding. You have that, Jamie? I do. Yep. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, has granted all of the variances requested by the applicant and it's recommended by the board on July 9th, 2020. This board is appreciative of the efforts of the applicant to provide a complete renewal of a site and completely new building, which is close to residential use, has pre presented uh, a project that is workable and aesthetically pleasing. The board has reviewed the uh, county planning board referral of July 2nd, 2020, and the modifications regarding the driveway and not meeting commercial standards and requirement of a traffic study. This board encouraged the applicant to work with the neighboring property for mutual right of way that might may improve the site safety and, and circulation. However, the board finds that evidence presented by the applicant and the board's ex experience in this area demonstrates that the low traffic expected on this site, a low number of visitors and staff are uh, there are uh, expected on the site that there are multiple improvements um, to improve traffic and accessibility. Accordingly, the uh, County Planning Board modifications regarding the driveway and the traffic study are overridden by a majority plus one. The board accepts the condition relating to the sidewalk and the pedestrian access and the plan reflects same. The approval for plans and other submitted documents, site plan documents that have been signed by the planning board chairperson and the applicant requires that all of the work shown be completed by the applicant in order for a certificate of occupancy or compliance to be issued. Any proposed changes, additions, deletions, scope of work materials, site plan, plan documents are not approved, subject to further site plan review pursuant to Town Code 192-122. Uh, that's the motion. A second, please. Peter, excuse me. Um, usually we do add in that uh, they would make that change on the plan about the um, Hardy board within two weeks okay. of after which you're authorized to sign the plans. So they just need to happen. <clears throat> okay, we'll add that to the to the motion. Uh, Jamie, would you take Sorry, care of that? Just to and clarify uh, that. You may you may not yes. want to use hardy board since that's proprietary maybe it's just fiber cement siding yeah that's yeah i that. agree Let's do a generic okay agreed Thank peter you. i think there's a qu uh, question from a resident there too uh peter it's don door i believe there was a condition on the zoning board on monday with regard to the um landscaping in the back the keeping of the trees and the uh, proximity to an r2 zone right directly behind it that was a condition of the variances that were granted i don't know if andy's on yeah yeah Ed? that's that's true will that be reflected in uh, are those carry over zba uh conditions carried over into our resolution or are they just uh i will add it exclusive? yeah you'll add it they will need to be. It was also subject to final site plan approval by the planning board to include those. Okay. Well, that'll be subject. To, we'll review that prior to my signing. Has anybody looked at the condition of those pine trees? I'm sure Donald has. I mean, they've been around for a long time and generally branches start dying off the lower branches so they don't really screen much. I, I couldn't really get a good handle of it on it driving by. I, I took a look at them, Steve. They're, they're still in pretty decent shape. Okay. Yeah, I would agree, Steve. They're not too bad. Okay. Everything then, Jamie? You need a second? Yeah, uh, if, Jamie's, if Jamie's okay with the revisions as Don has uh, expressed. Jamie? 
not the same oh, one. Sorry, oh, that. sorry. I get, I, that wasn't. Sorry. Uh, yes. F fine. I will get the exact words that were in the CBA resolution and put it in. Okay. All right. Second. I'll second. Steve. Steve. Hey, Peter. Peter. This is Joe. Sorry, I was late to jump in. Was there a letter? Did they get anywhere with uh, Andy as far as uh, is the is the uh, wall and all that? Or well, I we, have we, I have not heard of any kind of an agreement yet. I think Nicole uh, is on, and she might be able to uh, shed some light on that if there's new any new developments. Uh, hi everybody, this is Brad Pinsky. Can you hear me? Here's Brad. Yep, I'm here. Um, there, there have been no developments. We've reached out uh, twice to the individual. I assume because the building is maybe being sold, he doesn't want to get involved. Um, but uh, you know, we've tried to be as friendly as we can. It's not on our property. I mean, it, it has bulged out onto our property, has collapsed onto our property, but it is not our wall. So shy of going to court, which may be necessary, and getting an order of eviction and nuisance, um, there's nothing we can do legally to to solve this other than get a court order and that will be a while i i hope that andy could maybe on the town end uh do something um and if they're going to be coming back uh as we've been told for uh planning board and zoning board variances and approvals maybe you guys could address it with them uh at that point but it, it can't be our problem there's nothing i can do about it well brad I, what i'm going to say is is that i said at the work session Andy, that if it does have has migrated to uh, Brad's property, then you have something to from a code enforcement perspective, and I'll let you deal with it in that in that level. Uh, we can approve these plans as they are, and on uh, you, you follow through, and, uh, and Nick, uh, the homeowner on that side, whoever he or she or what LLC may be. Okay. Yes. Well, Peter, on that topic, if if the wall, if in the future the wall, and it requires, so. You're breaking up, Nate. To restore. Re Nick and I, I didn't hear all that you said. I got, I pretty much can figure it out, but I, I did. I well, uh, it's hear. all. It's all Doug. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking. Oh, it's Doug. Doug. I'm sorry. He's having connection. <laughs> okay. It's hard. I don't have any pictures here. I'm just doing it from. Oh, go ahead. Say that again, please. He may not have a good internet connection right now. Uh, I, I guess I, if uh, Nathan help me out here or someone else, that, that, that basically was saying that there's a further deterioration. That, but it's a property. What is the uh, what, what are the efforts to mitigate or or for zone? And it's really in code enforcement to, and Brad to deal with the neighbor uh, and and for the courts to deal with whatever um, liabilities and and mitigation needs to happen to make that wall uh, viable. I mean, if it really has collapsed, the code enforcement. Agency has the power to declare a dangerous condition in order that it be fixed. I, you know, I, I'd like to chime in. I, I don't know as if the wall is entirely the neighbor's wall. I mean, according to the survey that was submitted for this project, uh, the wall neanders through the, the property line at different areas. I, I think it behooves everybody to have uh, the two property owners work this out. Um, no, I do. I mean, but if we cite one, we cite the other. Well, do we know, Andy, when when was the wall built? And do we have drawings? Was it originally built? It, it's in... it's too old, to be honest with you, Nate. It's it, okay. I mean, it's probably back in the fifties, maybe the late fifties or so. Um, but okay. it's it definitely shows that you know towards the front half of the property where the building is, it appears. I mean, I went out and measured it with Tom Corello and. Um, you know, they've got five feet of a property line, but the, the wall measures three feet to the building. So it's 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 very close through there. And while this is not entirely, um, you know, this does not have an abstract or anything with it. Um, it clearly shows that it weaves in and out of the property line there. So I 
I think there is more to this than it's just the neighbor's problem. Uh, uh, Doug's back on the line. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Did I miss the vote? <laughs> no. Oh, no. How convenient, no. Doug. Um, I don't know. Did you hear anything that I had said? <laughs> Not really. Not the gist of it. We're trying to respond to it now. Um, yeah, my comment was that if in the future there is a, um, a reconstruction of the wall and it requires disturbance on this applicant's property, they need to uh, reconstruct a new tow of a retaining wall and so on and so forth. Um, I would hope that uh, they would participate willingly in the reconstruction because it's in everyone's best interest. And if so, can we make is should we make that a comment in the resolution or no? I, I agree with I, I agree with you, Doug. I think it should be a comment in the resolution because there's a same incident down in the city where down at the uh, there's a quality in, I think, and it's up against uh, another property and it's retaining somebody else's property, but it's also on somebody else's land. So if this has a failure and it falls in in the parking lot or on a car or whatever, or somebody pushes snow over the front of it onto somebody's car, then, then, I mean, uh, you know, that, that's, I, I guess you need to go on record and that there is a problem there and that both parties are, are going to be, both parties are responsible for whatever happens. I, I guess some, they're going well, to maybe need to access that. They're responsible certainly for the the wall that's whatever's on their on their property. And uh, Jamie, can you think right. of some language that can protect the town and also uh, something to look back on in terms of this approval process that allows uh, both owner uh, the current project, the uh, Brad's project, to to know that this is something that needs to be resolved um, in the, in the very near future. Um, let's try this uh, language. Uh, the board advises the applicant as part of this resolution that the town expects cooperation of the applicant in rebuilding of the wall, which appears to be on both properties in the future, should it be necessary. Um, guys, this is Brad Pinsky again. I, I, I got a comment about that. The, the town is making a finding which is going to be binding upon me if I go to court that you've determined Right, a judge is going to read this that you've determined whose property it is, and you can't. Um, we we didn't determine that. Everyone... What's that? No, I... that's not what you said. That... I don't read. Say it again. I Jamie. don't think that's what I said, Brad. It, it's going to say the board uh, advises the applicant that as part of this resolution, that the town expects cooperation in rebuilding of the wall, which appears to be on both properties in the future, should it be necessary. My, my problem is I, I still feel like that language is going to be put on us as a finding that the town is weighing in that it's partly our responsibility. And I do have to say their property, which we think this was put up sometime before the 70s, because that's when they had some permission to build a parking lot. It's bulged in the middle because their parking lot is collapsing into our property. There's no reason we needed the um, the wall, right? It, it's not our, we didn't dig down. They put a parking lot on in the seventies. Um, but the way you've phrased that appears to me that it would appear to a judge that the town is making a determination that as a matter of law, I need to be cooperating. And that may not be the legal result. I, I, I would, what about the rebuilding of the wall, which appears, but is not conclusive? To be on both I, properties. I, yeah, so Brad, I'm, I'm, does that does that mean you would not allow the neighbor onto your property in the future to make repairs or to reconstruct the wall? Like no, to the contrary. What I put into the letter is I said while we're doing this, I have heavy construction machinery on my property. I said we would contribute to pull down the wall for him and fix it. Um, we offered to you know I've got a, I'm going to have excavation equipment there. Why not? So, you know, I, I even said I'd pay for that portion of the demolition, but they've never responded. And I suspect they're not responding because they're selling the building. All right. Well, then you'll accept the, Jamie's last revision. 
Yeah, I, you, I would. I would. Does not make a conclusion. I, I would be okay with that. Okay. All right, so what Jamie just said, read it one more time and then I'll read the rest of the motion. Thank you. The board advises the applicant as part of this resolution that the town expects cooperation in the building of the wall, which appears to be, but is not conclusively on both properties, comma, in the future, should it be necessary. Is it possible to change the word expect to like, would like, or would appreciate? Expects is a demand. I, I can put appreciate. That would be great. All right, I'm going to repeat this motion to approve the plan that includes with Jamie's uh, language on the uh, the wall uh, as submitted with a finding and condition as follows. Only Board of Appeals has granted all of the variances as requested by the applicant, recommended by the board on July 9th, 2020. This board is appreciative of the efforts of this applicant to provide a complete renewal of the site completely new building, which is close residential uses has uh, presents uh, a project that workable and aesthetically pleasing. The board has reviewed the uh, accounting planning board referral July 2nd, 2020 modifications regarding the driveway, not meeting commercial standards and equipment of a traffic study. The board has encouraged the applicant to work with the neighboring property for mutual rights. And that's where you insert this, uh, Jamie, the way that may improve the site safety circulation. Uh, I won't say that that um, uh, the just a second I may improve the site safety. However, the board finds that the evidence presented by the applicant and the board's experience in the area demonstrates that the low traffic expected on the site, low number of visitors and uh, staff are expected to the site and there are uh, multiple improvements to the site to improve traffic and accessibility. Accordingly, the Onondaga County Planning Board modifications regarding the driveway and the traffic study are overridden by the majority plus one. The board accepts the condition relating to the sidewalk and the pedestrian access in the plan reflects the same. This approvals for plans and other submitted documents, site plan documents that have been signed by the planning board chairperson. The applicant requires that all the work shown be completed by the applicant in order for a certificate of occupancy or compliance to be issued. Any proposed changes, additions, or deletions, scope of the work or materials from site plan are not approved and are subject to further site plan review pursuant to the town of DeWitt code section 192-122. Uh, that's the motion. The second. I'll second, Steve. Steve. Nathan, I. Nathan, thank you. Kathy, no, I. Thank you, Kathy. Steve, I. Thanks, Steve. Doug, I. Life, I. Oh, life. Well, Joe, I. Joe, I. I've, I've had a bad Joe, life I. all night, too. And uh, Peter, I. Uh, unanimous. Uh, okay, Brad, good luck with your project. Um, Peter, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody very much. The landscaping um, ZBA condition in there as well. Yes, understood. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we, this kind of broke up because of the discussion, so I make sure you get that in. Okay. And, yes. uh, and it okay. should show on the plans, too. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Murphy subdivision. Jamie, anything I should add more than the motion for public hearing? Well, it, no, it just, it, of course, needs a public hearing um, because it's um, a lot being divided and this is a, a situation where the the original subdivision map many years ago before even I was involved with the planning board was divided uh, in, in this configuration that you see now. Uh, ultimately, uh, some years later, uh, the lots were combined and now they're basically going back to the way they were. Okay. But it is a it is a division of land. It's not a lot line adjustment, so a public hearing is required. Okay, so I have a motion to call for a public hearing on the subdivision for August 13, 2020, at 7:05 p.m. I'll make a motion, Peter. It's Kathy. Hi, uh, Kathy. Second. Second. All in favor? Joe. Joe. Nathan. I. Yep. Second. Nathan. Yes. 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 Steve, yes. Kathy, yes. 
Mike, yes. Joe, yes. Peter, yes. Unanimous. Thank you. See everybody on 705 on August 13th. Okay. Uh, the Peter, salt subdivision. Peter, are there any questions uh, that you have about the subdivision or that I can answer ahead of it? No, I think okay. I don't have that, uh, anybody else on the board. We we um, ask our attorney and uh, our consultant from O'Brien and Gear and staff if there are any issues and we weren't alerted to any. Jamie, do you want to comment on anything? Yeah, okay. I, and actually, Andy, I, I should have. <laughs> Andy's actually been here longer than anyone. He's the one who had the background and did look uh, at the prior maps and and actually recalls um, this and all and they had all met uh, the setbacks uh, back uh, then and still do. So not the setbacks, but the uh, uh, the frontage frontage. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, the only thing that I'd see on here that I think that we requested was that they were going to rename uh, it's lot 34A, and we got another 34A. Wasn't that sp one of them supposed to be the B? Is yeah, any issue or? Uh, no, we, we can get that changed. Okay. Thank you for noticing that, uh, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Murphy, any other questions? Nope. Glad to help cooperate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Andy, thank you. Uh, <laughs> All subdivision. Did you call the salt? Pardon? Did you call the yes. salt subdivision? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is just a simple lot line adjustment between these two existing pet tax parcels. The property located at 5064 Pine Valley Drive is picking up uh, some extra property. Behind them, they're actually taking some of the property located on Coronation Circle just to add a spe specifically for buffering purposes uh, for their personal house. Yeah, we've reviewed this. Uh, does anybody have any questions? What is the the property that's being reduced in size? Is that in conformance with everything else? Yes. Somebody want to be more specific in conformance, uh, Jamie? Uh, this meets all the criteria for. <clears throat> it does meet the criteria for a simple division. Um, it appears that there's. It's not something that literally anyone would notice because uh, of the heavily treed uh, area, and you know that it's always going. It's always someone's backyard. No yeah, matter. Well, I think what, what Steve was getting at was, does it meet all the criteria for a viable lot frontage oh, yeah. size? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So that in the event in the future that it does get sold, it is we're not creating a uh, non-compliant condition. Correct. No, it's just those lot line movement for a buffering yes, it, purpose. It acreage. Um, it meets meets the frontage. It it meets the acreage. What does it say there, Tim? It's uh, just under an acre is it's 0.97 acres. It's 166 foot wide, which is that's what is existing. We're not we're not um, thinning the lot at all. We're just remove uh, reducing the depth of that lot. So it's going it, they're losing roughly 100 feet of depth. Um, to be honest, specifically, they're doing this because the parcel just to the north did all that retaining wall stuff and all that landscaping to the north. And basically, my client just kind of got a little afraid that the people behind them may do the same type of thing and didn't want that all in their backyard. So they just wanted to buy some property up there so they couldn't do something like that to, quote unquote, they didn't want to look at something like that. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, that that lot. Um, I don't know what the grade is on that lot. It's, it's, it's pretty steep. It's pretty steep. So I guess it's even more important is is the part that's buildable uh, large enough if you're not going to. Yes, yes. I mean, hopefully yeah, we yeah. wouldn't have a, a situation where the owner does what the property to the left mm -hmm. has done. 
I can't blame your client at all for uh, wanting to have that buffer. That's pretty ugly. So the um, Andy, what zone? What uh, zone is this? It's an RO. So it's a half half acre or one acre. It's just shy of an acre. Just shy of an acre. No, I mean, what's yep. what's the, the I, zone? Oh, the zone. Oh. I'll have to look at it that. So I mean if you if you take the, the front line of the house to the right, I assume that's built to the setback. You carry it over onto this new lot. Um you don't have a whole lot of room before you hit the woods, which I understand is where the well, grade starts. Can I just interrupt you real quick? The house to the left that you're seeing there, there if you look at our plan. They're on the cul-de-sac and their built their front building line, their front uh, setback actually bumps into the uh, bumps farther back. So in theory, the house that goes on this vacant lot will be closer or can be closer to the road than what that house is on the left. Well, I was talking about the house on the right. Is that? Oh. Yeah, that's probably about average. Okay. Uh, the, the we minimum, worry about it when they pull a permit. <laughs> the minimum uh, lot area in the RO is forty thousand. Yes. Which is just under an acre. So. Okay, so they qualify. All right. Any other questions? And and just maximum lot coverage fifty percent. That that would be scrutinized at time of permit when they right. they pull the permit for the house and landscaping and such. Sure. Yep. Yeah. But right. just as a point of information. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll mo make a motion to approve the subdivision plan as presented with the following findings and conditions. For one, this is a simple subdivision of land under the code and as no new lots are created, this involves movement of a lot line. Number two, the lot line adjustment therein is for convenience of the parties and the topography of the land does not change the nature of the properties as being, quote, backyards, end quote, accordingly. And in light of the above, the board waives the public hearing requirement for the subdivision as permitted by the code there are no new lots created and there is no public interest in this lot line adjustment or the board has reviewed the EAF submitted by the applicant which is a negative C4 declaration for this project finding no significant adverse environmental impacts five applicant must file a subdivision map for the Onondaga County clerk's office in accordance with the rules of Onondaga County and provide a copy of the stamp file with a map with the town of DeWitt Department of Planning and Zoning May I have and, a second? Uh, Peter, I, I would like to add to that. Um, so in the future, uh, people will know we looked at the, the, that this is an RO zone and the lots are, are conforming as building lots. Okay. With that added, a motion, uh, a second? A second. Leif, all in favor? Kathy, Steve, aye. Uh, Nathan, aye. Yeah. Nathan? Doug, I. Joe, I. Peter. All right. Carried unanimously. Um, that's it. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Thank you. I do. Schroeder. Steve. <laughs> Steve. Uh, second? I'll second. Oh, Nathan. <laughs> okay. We got later. Kathy. All in favor? All right. All, right. Bye. Bye. all right, have a safe trip home. Thank you all. <laughs> we have three weeks before the next next meeting. Uh, enjoy your time with your family and stay stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And Thank uh, you, the Peter. staff, Emily and uh, Andy, Nick, great job as, as always. Appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.